Joining us now to talk about all today's events is Paul Levinson. He's a professor of communications and media studies at Fordham University. We thank you for being here, Professor. Good to be here. Uh, you're not very happy with the mayor today. Why not? He shows an appalling ignorance of the First Amendment, or maybe he's not ignorant and he's choosing to willfully misunderstand it. He issued a statement that said the First Amendment pertains just to free speech. Apparently, he's unaware that it also restricts the government from interfering with freedom of the press and freedom to peaceably assemble. And yet, as you mentioned, the media were prevented from covering what the mayor and his police did early this morning. There was at least one NPR reporter who was hurt by police. The police, by the way, can seem to disperse a crowd without hurting someone. Well, there were there were no serious injuries, and and you know there was a there was a bit of resistance going on. To be fair to the police, they had to clear out a, a lot of people who tried to to not be cleared out. Right, but not from this NPR reporter who was merely covering the story. Furthermore, what does peaceably assemble mean? Last time I looked at the First Amendment, I didn't see an expiration date in there. Now, obviously, no one would expect anyone to be allowed to protest forever, but two months is a lot less than forever. Do, do you think that peaceably assemble or the right of the people to peaceably assemble to air their grievances as, as framed in the Constitution gives them the right to pitch tents, to make encampments in that park? As long as, though, as those encampments don't endanger or hurt anyone, absolutely yes. Because an assemblage is not something that has to take place just in an hour or even in a day. And as a matter of fact, if you look at assemblages over the years, many times people have petitioned government for weeks at a time. So I think it's perfectly reasonable to allow people to stay there as long as there's no violence, as long as they don't hurt anybody. But there was a collision of rights here, wasn't there, in Zuccotti Park? The collision of property owners' rights with the rights of protesters to peaceably assemble, the collision of the homeowners' rights to, to enjoy the, the quiet enjoyment of their property in the area. Let's say someone lives in a home and someone moves in next door and you don't like that person's face or you don't like the color of their house, you don't like the color it's painted, you don't like the music that you hear when you walk by, you don't like the fact that they have a dog that barks occasionally. Does that person have the right to insist that the other person move out? So no, I think clearly our country is based on an understanding that people have rights to express themselves as long as they don't hurt other people. If Bloomberg was so confident, why didn't he go to court beforehand? There wasn't some emergency that was erupting that the police had to be called in like thieves in the dark of night when no one could see what, what was happening. And it is true that later this afternoon, a very low-level judge agreed with the mayor. But, you know, I remember in the Pentagon Papers case, there was uh, a New York judge who supported Nixon. You and predicted that the mayor would be overturned in court, and he wasn't today. Well, so. not, not today, but thank goodness we have higher levels of court. All right, Professor, thanks for coming in. We appreciate it. My pleasure.